So we're finding five constant values, C0 and C4. What I'm going to do is plug in the initial conditions up top here. So I see Y of X right there. I'm going to plug in zero. Uh, I'll do it in purple here. So Y of zero, all these X's turn into zeros right here that I'm circling in purple. So basically it comes down to C zero. So C zero is one. And now we'll do the Y prime of zero. So I'm looking down, let's see. And go right here for y prime. So when I plug in zero, the only term that's not, oh, I should point it down to there. That's after the derivative has been taken. Uh, so only our k equals zero term is going to show up. So it's going to be c1 is 1. So any questions about turning those initial conditions into uh, the constant values? So I'm just going to rewrite those two. So C0 is 1, C1 is 1. I'll write that down below. They're both 1, right? I know I said it 10 seconds, 5 seconds ago. All right. <laughs> so now you have a linear system, 5 equations. Basically it's really just three unknowns because we just knew or learned two of them. I'm not going to bother using a matrix. This is easy enough. So subtract C1 to the other, or add C1 to the other side. 2C2 equals C1. C2 equals 1 half C1, which is 1 half. Now I know C0, 1, and 2. I could find C3 on my second equation. Now when you don't use a matrix, you start to look like a crazy person, even when you've been doing math for a long time, because you just have equations written all over the place. There's really not the greatest ordering. I mean, if you know what you're doing. Like if you yeah, but then you come back and look at it and you're like, what type of a <laughs> lunatic wrote this? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to add C1 and 2C2 to the other side. So we got 1 plus C1 plus 2C2. C2 is 1 half, so C3 is 3 over 6, which is also 1 half. And last up, I need C4, so we'll do that equation down here. So we got 2C2 plus 3C3 minus C0. So 2 times a half is 1. 3 is a half, so we got plus 3 halves minus 1 is 3 halves. But that's 12 C4, so regular C4 is 3 halves over 12. Which is an eighth. Any questions on the C values I just got right there? So this should be one of the easier linear systems that you have to do because it will just cascade and you don't really have to do much beyond just plug in some values. All right, so let's take this back up to our original form, put them in the right order in the right place. So we got one, one, I'll just write them in order, one, one, one half, one half, one eighth. So they're going to be, let's see, right here for y prime. I know for y of x. Here we go. Let's just rewrite y of x at the bottom.
All right, so there's y of x. How can I check? Plug it back in. Plug it back in. So take two derivatives, plug it in, and check. So checking takes a little time, but should be relatively straightforward. All right, there's a problem, though. This does not end at x to the fourth. I just basically stopped there. So, there's more terms after this. So what about these more terms? The more accuracy you want in your solution, the further out you go, just like a Taylor series approximation of a function. So we basically have a fourth degree approximate solution. This might be good enough, maybe if we're going out like a mile or something like that, like if we're going a certain distance is accurate, but if we're going to Mars, maybe I need to get the 20th term. Uh, so all you do to get higher degree terms, I stopped my derivatives somewhere, or my expansions, I basically stopped uh, expanding, I made a choice to stop here. I could have kept going. And the further out you go, the more terms you can, the more constants you can find. And basically you'll get one, like if I go one more term, I'll basically get C5, the next constant. If I go two more terms, I'll get C5 and C6, et cetera, et cetera. So the further out you go, the more terms you can get. So that was undetermined coefficients. And we'll look at successive derivatives now. solve using successive derivatives. And we'll do the exact same problem, y double prime minus x plus 1 y prime plus x squared y equals x and y 0 is 1 and y prime of 0 also be 1. <coughs> Alright, so the this is the exact same problem, so I can still use that theorem that there exists a solution that's analytic with the uh, radius of convergence of infinity, just like before. So if I go back real fast. So I wrote down the details here, but F1, F0 are analytic, and they both have their own Taylor series, and their intervals are negative infinity to infinity. So from the theorem, we know there exists a solution, and it's going to look like that. So I'm using the theorem, which just tells me this thing exists. What's an example of a non-analytic? Uh, a non-analytic function that still has some nice calculus, like you could still at least differentiate it once. I can give you an analytic function that can't be differentiated at all, but like the function that the uh, is the, so here's like the like how would you know you do not have I'll give you an analytic function I've only we've only written analytic functions in this class the whole entire quarter oh, okay what is a non analytic like even that can't be different that's a good question all right how about this function right here What's this weird Q thing I wrote? Have you seen Q before? No. So Q is all the rational numbers. So this says if X is a rational value, it's zero. If X is irrational, it's one. So if you graph it, 
there's a lot of points that have y value 0, a lot of points that have y value 1, and it turns out, uh, without doing too much deep diving into how the rational numbers look and the real numbers, they're basically uh, way less rational numbers than there are real numbers. Uh, so there's an infinite number of both, so it's pretty tricky, but basically this function has an infinite number of points at zero and an infinite number of points at one. So this function definitely does not, uh, won't have a Taylor series representation. Uh, you can't even find a derivative. It's not continuous. It has n basically none of the properties that we really need to do anything in calculus that I showed you. So this is like the an easy monkey wrench into the system that basically breaks everything. So you can't take derivative, it's not continuous. Uh, there are no limits at any value. <laughs> uh, yeah, limit does not exist at every x value. No matter what x value you choose, there'll be, no matter how close you go, there's always a, basically, no matter what x value you choose, like x naught, if you have any interval, there'll be at least one rational number and one irrational number inside that interval, no matter how small you make it. Which means there'll be a y value of one and zero in that interval. So there's no matter how small I make it, I get zero and one in there. It'll never get close to either of those two values. So it's kind of like the ultimate bad step function. I just tried not to think about it. If you try not to think of something, you're thinking of it. So you've already failed. That's the <laughs> How about pondering about cheese without thinking about it? All right, so every function I give you is going to be analytic. The only question is on what interval. That's all. Uh, and now a very quick explanation of how to very quickly compute those intervals. If your function is continuous everywhere, you will probably have an infinite interval. If your function is a rational function or any trig function with vertical asymptotes, so let's just take... Uh, What's an easy? Tan inverse. No. Well, tan inverse doesn't have any vertical asymptotes. Let's take tangent. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> so if we think about tangent, uh, in order to, uh, if we center it at zero, basically the furthest that we can go is until we hit our first vertical asymptote. So without doing any real work, the interval of convergence, if I'm centered at zero, will be pi over two. So I can go pi over two either direction. So basically, vertical asymptotes screw things up, is one way to think about it. If I was centered over here at, let's see, I think that would be pi, I could still go pi over two either direction. So in a real world scenario, what is the asymptote where we're at? Like, you saw the car just traveling through time for a second or something? The asymptote, uh, well, it depends on what the axis represent. So if, if this is time right here, and this is uh, position, or height maybe, because it's already on the y-axis, maybe that's height. Uh, you could say if you get close to pi over 2, your height gets infinitely large. Gotcha. So you just kind of just go from, like, you know, being one high to, like, just boom. Yeah, but it's also very hard to think about these things. Uh, because let's say that this is, uh, I don't know, I mean it's pi over 2, but let's say whatever, we, at least we assume time moves in this direction at a somewhat constant rate, uh, so we know we're going to pass pi over 2. Unless you didn't run out too many. Yeah, well then you can get the idea of what is time, but let's pretend like we have some idea of what time is <coughs> and what space is. Uh, still in spaces, how, in, how are you going to measure height if you can't even... <laughs> <laughs> <You're terrible>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I told you we were failing. <laughs> 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 um, so they represent things that are very hard to think about because we can't, like if this is time, you can't go past that or you kind of have to ignore what's going on for a short period of time, basically and then pick it up on the other side. It just uh, means cosine is zero. 
Well, it means the reciprocal is zero, yeah, <laughs> for whatever the reciprocal, Same. however that relates. Uh, you could think of them almost as singularities, like if you read the Universe in a Nutshell book by Stephen Hawking, yeah. they talk about time, um, why there is, one of the theories of why there is nothing before the Big Bang, because the Big Bang was infinitely long ago, the closer you get to it, just the slower time goes, or faster, I forget how it goes, but, but if you, you can't go through before the Big Bang because there's an infinite amount of time before the Big Bang. So it's like the thing you couldn't ever reach if you went backwards. Kind of like negative infinity. Yeah. If you if you're respectable at physics, you need to know who he is, who Stephen Hawking is. And there's plenty of other people who are important too. All right, so we're not doing physics, we're doing math. So for us, vertical asymptotes are just something to look at on graph. <laughs> we don't need to worry about the, what they represent. So we get the, uh, I don't think I named that theorem, did I? I think I just called it theorem. So by above theorem, an analytic solution exists. So we'll go summation CK, X to the K. Let's think about this in a different way, though. So think about the Taylor expansion of y of x. Now, this may seem a little weird. We're going to write the Taylor expansion of a function that we don't know about. Good news is there's not very much work to do. So y of x is going to be uh, we're expanding at zero. So y of zero plus y prime of zero over one factorial times x to the first power plus y double prime at zero divided by two factorial x squared y triple prime of zero divided by three factorial x cubed. This is the Taylor expansion of any function that uh, is differentiable. <coughs> So y fourth derivative at zero over four factorial x to the fourth plus dot dot dot. All right, so that should be familiar. Just replace y by f, and this is probably in your was on your cheat sheet for calc two. So it's just Taylor expansion right there. So what we're going to do next is plug in uh, zero. So y of zero is zero. And on this expansion, every term is zero except our constant term at the beginning. So y of zero is zero. So what does that tell us about the C zero, the constant term? It's zero. It has to be zero. Yeah, so it's going to start out basically the same. Oops, C zero is one. It's going to start out basically the same. Whoa. Hold on, that should have been one. Wow. Jeez. So this is basically the same step, the same kind of using. We're using the initial condition in, in the exact same way right here. So our next one, y prime of zero is one. So if we look at that, zero. So I'm taking a derivative of what's above. Uh, are we 
let's see, so we get zero there. We're gonna have y prime of zero. I'm doing way more work. Hold on. This is way harder than it needs to be. I'm writing so much more than we need to write. Wow. Rookie mistake. All right. Y0 is 1. Let's just plug it in. Y prime of 0 is also 1. Let's plug it in. Y0 and Y1. Or Y0 and Y prime of 0. So I'm just putting those values right in. Right. Why prime would be it would just be zero? That's one happen? in the condition. Uh, oh, I see it. Oh. The x coordinate zero. <laughs> not ne not making the y coordinate necessarily zero or the y prime coordinate oh. zero. Yeah. All right. Now, at this point, we run out of initial conditions. If I had seven more initial conditions, I could just go down and basically plug in those values. So I don't have any more initial conditions. So it's as good as it's going to get. So I'm just going to rewrite, and I don't, do I want factorials? Yeah, let's leave them as factorials. So I got y double prime of 0, x squared over 2 factorial, plus y triple prime of 0, over 3 factorial, x cubed. So that's y of x. Uh, what we're going to do now is find y prime of x and y double prime of x. Actually, no, cancel that order. That'll be a waste of time. We do need derivatives, okay. So here's y prime of x is, let's see, one plus, and I'll line these terms up from where they come from, plus y triple prime of zero. No, that's a constant, what am I doing? x over 2 factorial plus y triple prime of 0 over 3 factorial times 3x squared. is just y prime of, z of x. All right, so let's simplify it a little bit. We got one plus y double prime of zero x over one factorial, because the two cancels the two in the factorial, plus y triple prime of zero, threes cancel, we got two factorial, x squared plus y fourth derivative at zero divided by three factorial, x cubed. So that's y prime of x. So basically these factorials are getting taken down one notch by each derivative. So now we're going to get y double prime of x. So that's y, tr oh, y double prime of 0 over 0 factorial times 1. That's why 
triple prime of zero over one factorial times x plus y fourth derivative at zero over two factorial times x squared. That's our second derivative of x, or of y. So we're going to plug everything back in the ODE, but the only difference is I'm going to put 0 in for x. Remember, the ODE solution should work for basically all x's in the interval of convergence. So it better work for 0. And our interval is going to be in, uh, infinite, so it should work for all x's uh, overall. But the best x value to use is 0. It's also the one our initial conditions use. So we're going to evaluate at x equals 0. So I'll write just once the ODE without filling in x values. So if you notice, our y term is going to completely disappear when x is 0, because it's multiplied by x squared. This x plus 1, that x is also going to become 0. So now I'm going to plug in x is 0. So we're going to get y double prime evaluated at 0 minus y prime evaluated at 0 plus 0 equals 0. So make sure every x gets a value of 0. And be careful because the y double prime is a function of x, even though I don't write y double prime of x every time. So it's a function of x, it still gets the 0 value. You can't just put in 0 for some x's and leave the other ones as x. That's not okay. All right, the whole reason we did the derivatives up top is so I could figure out y double prime of 0 over 0 factorial. This is the only term in y double prime of 0 right there. Why are all the rest of the terms going to disappear when I plug in 0? They all have an x in it. So basically your constant term, by plugging in 0, your constant term is the only one that's going to survive, which means the algebra is going to be really, really easy. So all these terms are going to be zeroed out. Uh, so in our case, x was equal to 0, but in general, it'll be x equals a. So whatever your centered value is, those all are going to become 0. All right, so we're ready to plug these in. Zero. So w what is y prime of 0? 1. One. I think it's supposed to be 1 or negative 1. It just disappeared on me, though. And we're back. All right, so y double prime of 0 equals 1. I think we got a half last time. We'll reconcile that in a, in a minute. <coughs> so any questions on how I got y double prime of 0? How would I get y triple prime of 0? I can't do the trick I just did because our ODE tops out at y double prime. So I don't have a place to plug y triple prime into the ODE. So I can't do that. Oh, the classic calc 1 move. Take a derivative. Let's do it. All right, so any questions on why I can't just 
do this one more step in that direction. If I had a wide triple prime, I'd be okay. But unfortunately, I don't. So I'm basically going to create a wide triple prime by taking a derivative. And we're definitely going to have some product rule going on. I don't think we'll have chain rule, but there'll be some product rule happening. So we're going to take a derivative very carefully. So cannot find y triple prime of 0. Using the above method. So when in doubt, take a derivative. That's probably not good advice in general. I won't write it down. All right, what uh, variable am I going to take derivative with respect to? Why are we going to do it with I agree x, but y x? So all the other derivatives are x derivatives. So basically y prime and y double prime, there's only one variable that refers to, which is the input for y, which is the x variable. So these have to be uh, x derivatives. You're almost always doing derivatives with respect to x. There's a couple problems that use t's or s's or something, but almost everyone is going to be s, or going to be x. All right, so take your best derivative. I'll start you out. It'll be y triple prime. So you definitely have product rule where I underlined. Here's our new ODE that I just regrouped to write basically decreasing derivatives of y, which is how we normally write our ODEs. So I got my triple derivative and then second, first, and no derivative. So any derivative questions or algebra questions? I did regroup and factor and probably distribute and skip all those steps. So now all we're going to do is plug in x equals 0. And we basically know everything except y triple prime of 0. So we're going to plug in 0 now. What happens if I plugged in x equals 0 uh, before I took my derivative? What would I get? What happens if you put a value in for x and then take a derivative? You'll get 0 equals 0. So don't do that. You already knew zero, zero equals zero. So don't plug in the constant value and then take derivative. Take derivative first. All right, so y triple prime of zero minus zero plus one is one. y double prime of zero plus negative one y prime of zero plus zero equals one. And now y, uh, y prime was one. Y double prime is one half. No, Oop, Y double prime is one also. So add those two to the other side. Y triple prime of zero equals two. All right. Any questions on Y triple prime? Uh-oh, my notes, it says it's three. Oh, I didn't even see the other one over there. All right. <coughs> How would we find y quadruple prime? Another derivative. So which, I'll number these, which equation should we be taking the derivative of? 
<laughs> we could technically do it on one, but we've already done some of the work, so I think three is the best option. It's the basically the most simple we get before we plug X in. So we're going to take that third one and another derivative. So we're finding Y quadruple prime. All right, so I want you to finish this, uh, or find y quadruple prime of zero all the way. So you just got a couple product rules going on, and then you have all those values you need. So really nothing harder than a product rule right here. And it's a good time if you got questions. See the hand on coming around. On my last line or second to last? So my double prime. So I got a negative one. So that's my negative one. And then that hopefully. That guy, that right there. Yes. Oh, so that that would definitely change things. So 
just gonna affect y prime, so that'll be 2x plus 2x. And the double prime gets plus minus. So that'll be x squared minus 2. Y double prime plus 4xy prime plus 2y equals 0. All right, so any questions on this right here? So I was just demonstrating how you flip one negative sign. Obviously, it screws everything up, unfortunately. All right, so we're going to plug in x equals 0 now. As you can tell, if we want another six or seven terms, things will get hideous pretty quickly because uh, bas basically you keep getting additional terms out of here. So things will generally get worse. Uh, if you throw anything like a tangent or a secant, any trig function other than sine and cosine, things get way worse really quickly because those functions have progressively worse derivatives. So we got y quadruple prime of 0 plus y triple prime of 0 plus negative 2y double prime of 0 plus 0 plus 2y of 0 equals 0. All right, so y triple prime of 0 was 3. Minus 2 times y double prime was 1. Yeah, y double prime 0 was 1. Uh-oh. No. Wait, so there's only one y triple prime term. So I just rewrote it as like negative x. Oh, I see. <laughs> Guess not. All right, so that'll give us minus. So that'll be a minus. Y triple prime, so that's minus three. Plus zero plus two times one equals zero. All right, so we have three, negative three. Add to our side, we get three. Okay. So that's as far as I'm going to go. We could go and get y fifth derivative with the same process. And it would be pretty much the exact same steps, just more work each time. So let's reconstruct the original. So what I'm going to do is write down what y of x equals. So it was y of 0 plus y prime of 0 over 1 factorial x plus y double prime of 0 over 2 factorial x squared. This is that Taylor uh, expansion that probably is already on your calculus cheat sheet. If not, probably a good idea to put on your differential equations cheat sheet. And I think we only went to, yeah, fourth derivative. Next to the fourth. All right, so all I'm going to do is just plug in the five constant values for the y, uh, y of zero, y prime of zero, etc. So we got one plus one over one x plus y double prime. I think it was one x squared. Y triple prime was three. So we got three. Three again, and we have three over four factorial x to the fourth. Now there are more terms, so I'm just gonna write plus dot dot dot. Don't want to ignore those. We're just not gonna uh, worry about them now. So we get one plus x plus one half x squared plus that three knocks it down to a one half x cubed. 
So 4 factorial is, we're going to lose the 3, so it's going to be 4 times 2, which is 8. So that's 1 eighth x to the 4th. Any questions on that expansion? Is that what we got the first time? Hopefully. Yes. 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 One person says yes. It's good enough. Yeah, exactly. All right, here it is on the screen. That was our first time around. <laughs> Second time around, same thing. All right, so you choose which of those ways you want to go. I don't care which way you go as long as you make sure you show your work. Either way, you got to take derivatives. I think you can avoid the product rule if you go the undetermined coefficient route, but then your price you pay is linear algebra. This way, you really have almost trivial algebra to do, but you're going to have product rule and things like that.